Okay, this is a very sort of short video just about getting a uh, an old um, CPU fan from a from a laptop and a data cable, a micro USB data cable for a phone, um, and then just literally stripping the wires back on both things, so the fan and the cable, tying them up together, taping them up, and then using the fan to distribute some um, air through my Raspberry Pi case. Really, there's not an awful lot of point in doing this because I was really, you know, the Raspberry Pi is quite happy running at sort of 40, 44 degrees. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun fun project to do. It takes sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, I suppose. Um, and, you know, you can whack it in, the, in your case as long as your case is big enough. Um, and, you know, you can take it down take the temperature down around sort of 10 degrees so you know it's, i guess it is worthwhile um although i won't be using this particular one over the long term because it is quite a loud thing and i don't really want to listen have to listen to that every time i'm in my lounge watching tv um we've also got here the pogo plug it's um sorry not pogo plug it's the raspberry pi inside a pogo plug case um, I done this because the Pogo plug was quite crap. Uh, the software that it came with was crap. Um, popped on Arch Linux, which run you know, quite nicely, but I was a bit more interested in getting the Raspberry Pi because you, know, you can do a lot more with it. So I took the guts out of this Pogo plug and then just stuck the, the Raspberry Pi in there. So let's have a quick look at the Raspberry Pi itself. There we go. That's the. 512 version it's the model b um you can see that's just mounted in there with the two screws Ooh, one there and the other one is there um on the other side or on the back of this here we've got the ports for the usb and the ethernet um that kind of really badly cut out piece of plastic there was where the um original usb ports were for the the pogo plug and um, so i just cut them out and then stuck it on a or stuck the pogo plug on a bit of anti-static cushioning um and then got, attached it via the, the screws there and it's you know it's quite secure doesn't really wobble too much um but i can kind of you know just whip things in and out as when needed and um, then you've got the power cable there that's from an old mobile phone um, and then you've got this here which is actually goes to my hub this USB this is a basically a new link four port hub which isn't back powered I got that from mod my Pi. Um, I think it was under 10 pound yeah, so that's pretty decent and then I've got a couple of hard drives that are also hooked up to the Raspberry Pi um, and an 8 gig SD card the hard drives at the moment though aren't mounted um, I'll get around to doing them at some point. Um, you've got the other ports on the side here. You've got the HDMI port here. And then you've got ooh, your video and your um, sound. Um, I don't use them, so I'm not really bothered about having access to them at all. I just run a completely headless um, Debian-based server, which is through Raspbian. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just pop that case back in there for a sec and then head over to the Raspberry Control uh, which will give me some basic information about my device that is running currently. Um, as you can see there this is just the main dashboard there's really not an awful lot you can do with this it is literally just a basic monitoring software um, that's installed onto the SD card on the Pi. Um, see there I've got my host name my local IP um, and then you got, it tells you what version of Apache you're running and what OS as well. Um, you can see all these little ticks here, so everything's running smoothly. And then we've got the uptime here as well. That was on for around three days solid, but I've rebooted it. Can't remember why, um, but I rebooted it. Then if we have a look at the finer details, gives you a little bit more information linux kernel firmware um the version of debian which is wheezy um and then we've got the information here sort of swap ram cpu this is the one we want to look at the cpu so we're at 40 
43 degrees at the moment. That'll probably go up another degree now that the lid, uh, the case is back, back on together. Um, we've got the storage and network information there, and who's currently logged in. Um, have a look up here again. There we go. The heat. Okay, so once I put this fan in here, that should drop down around sort of 10 degrees. So bear in mind that was at 44, um, it would drop down to about 34, maybe actually drop down to about 30, so around 14 degrees. So it's quite, it's quite decent, um, but really, you know, it's debatable whether or not having a fan inside the Raspberry Pi is worth it because you know this is quite happy running at this sort of temperature here. Um, I for one, it probably will end up getting a, maybe a slightly smaller fan um, or something that's actually not as loud and then just run that um, in the side of the Raspberry Pi which will be in the side of the case just there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this old fan up onto here, close, close the case up and then monitor the temperature for the next sort of five minutes and where we can see how much difference it's actually going to make. So I shall be back in a minute. 